Welcome to Excel Magic Trick 1872. And I have an awesome Power Query M code trick for you today. But I need your help. I wrote this book, and guess what? At Amazon, there's only one review. Now, even if you don't like Power Query and M code, I need you to help support the Excel is Fun channel. Go and buy this book and then leave an awesome review at Amazon. Now, to tell you the truth, there are some problems with this book. Even though the content on the inside is an awesome story about the power and magic of M code. Hey, the cover is blurry. The pages at the top, they cut them too close at the top, not close enough at the bottom. The pages are too thin. You can almost see through the pages. And there's some other problems. But the content and the story is totally awesome. So help me out and go and get that book and leave a review at Amazon. Now, you are not going to believe this trick in M code. Now the Power Query goal is simple. We need to import and append one, two, three CSV files. Each file has five years of past stock data. Now, we probably all know how to do this. It's a simple task using From folder. Then we click the button, and then brrr, off to the side, it creates all these extra queries and custom functions. Now, it works, but it clutters up everything. So I want to show you a much easier and cleaner way to do this. Data, get and transform, get data drop down from file, from folder. Now you navigate to the folder, and this folder is available for download below the video. Click Open. Hey, it's showing us a preview of what's in that folder. Do not click Combine. Do not click Load. You always click Transform Data. Now let me just show you the mess if you do what almost everyone does, Combine Files. Click. We have to click OK to accept the delimiter. And it's doing a bunch of stuff over here. And broop, that's the cluttered mess that I don't want. We're going to see a different, less cluttered method. All right, we're not going to click that button this time. I want to rename it. And then we only want CSV, so we'll use the built-in feature. Now I'm going to only check CSV. It'll write the code for us. And we can see table.selectRows, source. That's the previous step for each. That's a shorthand for a custom function. And then, hey, from that column, that's all we want. Now, when we're in Power Query and we're creating M code, I'm going to come over F2. Don't leave any spaces in any of the identifiers. I'm going to backspace and Enter. It makes the code messy. And we'll see an example of that in just a moment. We can see we only have CSV. Now, for the tables, and the tables are actually in this binary CSV file. They're not quite structured correctly yet, but we'll structure them. But in each one of these tables in every row, I need the stock ticker APL. And then for this soon to be table, I want GE. So we have to transform this column, select transform over to extract text before delimiter. And the pattern that we see is historical, historical, historical. So I'm going to type historical. And I'm a terrible speller, so I better spell it right. But that is serving as the delimiter, so we get only everything before this delimiter. Click OK. That's exactly what we want. We're going to have to do it in a clever way, get this to be repeated in every single row of the five-year stock data. And we'll see an easy way to do that. Let's rename this step. All right, the next task is to add a custom column. And for each row, transform a CSV file into a proper table, which also has a new column that repeats each one of the tickers. So we go up to Add Column, Custom Column. I'm going to name this new column Get CSV Tables. And we'll do this in a few steps and look at the result. The first part is easy, CSV document. And by the way, a great trick is I see CSV and I need a dot. Don't type the dot, just type the D. Then you can use the Tab key to accept it. If you use the dot, then it doesn't work very well. 
I'm going to come over to Content. That's this column right here. Double click. There's the source. We can choose columns, which we don't need to do here. We need all of them. And we could specify the delimiter, but a comma is the delimiter. CSV uses that by default. When I close parentheses and click OK, check this out. We already see the table coming into view. Now we're going to need to promote headers. So let's come over to, I'm going to rename this. Something like custom column to create CSV tables. Let's click the icon. Now before the C in CSV, I'm going to click space back arrow to give myself a little breathing room. Table.promote, I see it there, tab. Open parentheses, delete, close. And when I click OK, if I look at each table, bam, the first row has been promoted to column headers or field name. Now all we need to do is add that extra column to grab ticker name from the name column. All right, let's go back up, click the icon. And so we amend our formula, table add. I see table.add column tab, open parentheses. Now the screen tip says table and table.promote headers and csv.document. That's delivering a table, comma. The next argument say, hey, what's the name of the new column you want to add? In double quotes, something like stock ticker, and double quote, comma. And then we need a function. I'm going to use the keyword each. That is the syntax that stands in for a custom function. And what do I want in each row? I want the name from the column. So I'm going to come over here and double click. Close parentheses. Now, I'll tell you right now, this is not going to work. Click OK. Let's look at the first table. Well, it got the field name, but error. And here's the reason why is that we have back-to-back table.add column functions. And the first table.add column function directly after the each keyword, that's the only time that we can go and grab the ticker name from this column. Once we get inside the second table.add column function, we can't go back and grab this name unless directly after the each keyword we define a variable. Now, normally what we do is we create fancy custom functions with the custom function syntax. But you don't need to do that. As long as you're in the scope of this table, you just define a variable that points to this column. And then that variable can be used throughout the rest of the formula. And the way you define variables is with the let expression. I'm going to say let. And then I get to define whatever name for that variable I want. I'm going to choose name. Hey, I want that variable to be equal to square bracket name. That means from now on, that name column can be referred to as name. And it doesn't matter where the scope is. It could be in the scope of the first table or the second set of tables. So now, I come after defining the variable and type in. The in keyword says, well, I'm done defining the variables. Now everything after is the formula. And if you want to use that name variable, you can use it wherever you want. And it will understand this scope and get that column. So now I come to the end. Remember, I'm inside the second table.add column function, and I get rid of the field access operator. And now when I click the check mark, scroll over, drum roll, bam, there it is. I have overcome the requirement that we use special custom function syntax. Forget that. Just define a variable, and you can use it throughout the rest of the formula. So now check this out. Including the let. There's the whole bit of code that replaced all that brrrr, all those extra messy, not very clean in the query, queries and custom functions. Now we still have to append these tables. And we could use this button, but I don't want to do that. I want everything clean and less complicated. This step right here, well, it's defining this table. And I can use lookup syntax to go and look up this column. So that's what I'm going to do. Click f of x. 
I come to the end of the table, field access operator. I got to spell everything right, get CSV tables. And when I click the check mark, remember, we only have one set of field access operators. Check. I get exactly what I'm going to need, a list of tables. And why is the list important? Because we want to append these. And I don't want to use more complicated means. I just want to use table.combine. I see it, tab, open parentheses. And what does it say? Tables as list. That is perfect. Close parentheses, check, and there's my table. Now, the next thing is I only want date, close, and last, and then stock ticker. Now, again, there's many ways we could do this. But I'm just going to come up to this bit of code. And I haven't given it a name yet. We'll, we'll name it. And it's delivering a table. I'm totally allowed to use field access operators on a table to choose just the columns I want. Now, instead of just a single field access operator, that would extract a column as a list. I put two sets. And that will extract the columns as part of a table object, date. And then I want comma, field access operator, close forward slash last, comma, field access operator. I think it was stock ticker. I'm a terrible speller. There it is. When I click the check mark, it doesn't work, but it's going to be helpful. It says, hey, there's a problem right here. Well, first off, I spelled it wrong. Let's see what happens if I get rid of the A. Check. No, the problem is that forward slash. Remember, I told you anytime you name identifiers, you don't use spaces, because that makes everything messy. Well, you can't use certain characters either. And anytime you have characters that are not allowed or you have spaces, instead of just typing the identifier, you have to type pound double quote. And then a double quote at the end. And now it's inside this special syntax. And notice, it's not just double quotes, because that's the syntax for text. Pound double quotes means identifier with some non-allowed character. Check. Oh, I guess I spelled stock ticker. I told you I'm a bad speller. Let's see. Backspace. I hope I didn't put a space there. Check. And just like that, I have my three column table, all the one, two, three CSV files appended. Now let's add some data types. Control click, transform, detect data types. Date, I don't want currency. That gets me in trouble when I do multiplication. I want decimal. I want to replace. ABC is fine. Rename these. And there we go, a set of code that is not messy. And I look over here, I don't see all that. And now I can close and load to wherever I want. All right, that was a lot of fun with importing and dealing with CSV files and appending and doing it in a clean way. All right, we'll see you next Excel magic trick.